Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Oxford School of Drama Foundation course Q&A. Um, so on the Q&A today, we've got Juliet, who is the deputy head of courses at the Oxford School of Drama. Uh, we've got Jake and Farah, who both did the foundation course and are now first years uh, on the three year acting course. Um, so at the bottom of the screen, there's a Q&A function. If you'd like to put any of your questions in there, I'll read them out and they'll be answered. Um, if you use that rather than the chat function, because we're not keeping an eye so much on the chat function. Um, and if you ask questions about um, applying or finance, we've got our admissions administrator who's also on the call and she'll be typing out a lot of the answers to those questions. And the ones that I read aloud will mostly be relating to the content of the foundation course. Um, yeah, so if you want to start getting getting the questions in now, give you a couple of minutes to get some in. Um, in fact, I'll start with this one, which was sent in advance. Um, is there a chance for us to meet everyone else on the course before it starts to get to know everyone and to talk about accommodation? Well, the, the short answer to that is yes. Um, I wonder for, for you guys, did you, what was your experience? So we have these welcome days uh, once you are you know, signed up and you're, you're coming um, where you are welcomed and, you know, lots of different things um, happen. Um, Jake, did you experience one of those? Uh, yeah, so I went to one sort of like very close to where the sort of course started and we got introduced to quite a lot of the third years, uh, quite a lot of the people that were sort of the student reps. Um, and then we also, you bump into a load of other people on sort of different other years. So I did get to meet quite a lot of sort of people from loads of different years. So yeah, I did get quite a good sort of idea and got to meet a lot of people before we started the course, yeah. Okay. So you were, and also some of the people would have been at your audition as well. Mm. Um, and you will have you know, plenty of, of opportunity to find out about accommodation and various things in, at those times. Great. Uh, what type of work on singing do you do? Okay, well, we do, we do have singing on the, on the foundation course. We sometimes call it acting through song. Um, so it's a slightly different experience. And what's quite interesting is quite a few people who come on the foundation course, you know, for some of them singing is a kind of a, a love. Um, and for others, it's like, don't let me sing in front of anybody. Okay, so there's a kind of a real mix in people's experience. Um, I don't know what category you two fell into or, or what your experience was. Anyone got any stories to share? Do you want to go far or do you want me? <laughs> It's about singing. Yes. Yeah. Um, I found as someone who hadn't done any really singing work prior to starting, the idea of singing in front of the class was quite daunting. However, I found... Um, can you hear anything in the background? Sorry. A bit, but don't worry, carry on. We're all used like to building. <laughs> so I found that I found as it started, our singing teacher, Dash, like... He taught us that it was all about using the skills we had to act and putting that into song. And I definitely learned a lot in terms of vocal, like breath control, um, hitting different notes. But most importantly, it was acting through song and really playing around with whatever song you're given and enjoying the experience. Okay. Yeah, so you will, you will, I'm afraid, or you, you may love that idea, the concept that you'll have that, that challenge. So that, that does exist on the course, yeah. Great. Um, what is a typical day like on the foundation course? Big question. Uh, uh, any of us could, uh, my days may be less typical, yeah, let's go for a student typical day, shall we? Jay? Typical? Yeah, go, I'll go. Um, yeah, so we get, when did we start usually on a day? I think it oh, was well, it's like, be about, yeah, half nine. Um, and you have sort of, we had, I think, one lesson in the morning that would be split up in sort of two periods, both going for about sort of an hour and a half. Uh, and then sort of period two being the same lesson and continuing. Then we go for, with a break in the middle uh, for about 15 minutes, I think it was. And then after the two periods, we go for lunch 
which would be, I think it was 45 minutes when we did it, but now it's turned into an hour. Uh, back to 45 again. And now it's back to 45. <laughs> <It's> lovely. <laughs> um, uh, and then we go into the same sort of thing as in the morning, just the same lesson in sort of two periods, split up an uh, hour and a half each. Or sort of other days, you know, in the, in the morning or in the afternoon, sort of, you know, you might have two different lessons for an hour and a half, but either sort of two or three lessons split up into different periods throughout the day. Okay. Lesson sounds a little bit of a boring word, Jake. Okay, me. yeah, lessons, uh, so, experience, yeah, let's name experiences. It, right? So you may be devising for three hours. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, devising, and doing doing uh, animal studies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, animal studies, voice, acting, film, singing, improvisation was my favorite. Yeah, oh God, yeah. There we are. That's better than lessons, yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add to that point. I found all the classes were so engaging and we had that opportunity to play, which is so important. Like sometimes you'll be doing a class, for instance, film or improv or animal studies, which was my favourite. And because you're enjoying yourself so much and you're just getting to play around and it's okay if you make a mistake, it's definitely had a different feeling to let's say school where we were doing the same amount of hours per week but it just was so much more draining whereas here it was like I'm going and I'm doing something that I love every day and like playing around enjoying myself great thank you um how competitive is it to get onto the course can we say that it is as competitive and difficult as to get onto a BA or a three-year acting course I would say that it, it is competitive. So you are auditioning um, with, you know, with many others. Um, and then there are more places. So, so with, a, um, with the main course, you know, you've got 19 um, in, in a year, in one year coming in. So that makes that, it's more competitive to get into that. So with this, there's only 17, 16 of you in a class. Um, but we will take three groups in in a year. Does that make sense? So, so there are more places uh, available, um, but we're still looking for you know the, the the talent, the potential, the energy, you know, lots of different things um, in you in order to to get in. Uh, is it usual for your students? Uh on the foundation course to go on to study at the same school or can you do foundation and then apply to other drama schools? You, you can apply to other drama schools, yes. You can not apply to drama school. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not a course purely to go on to drama school. Obviously many, many that is the route they take and being so immersed in a drama school and experiencing the tutors, the other students, um, you know, many get excited by that and want to go on, whereas others, they make decisions in their life and decide that that's not for them and they take a different path. Um, so, I mean, this year we have ended up with rather a lot of our, I mean, these two were on our foundation, they are now in our first year. And how many families have we got in our first year? We have eight. Is it eight? Yeah. Eight from our last year, so the year me and Jake did it, and then we yeah. have two people who were on two different right, years. So we got ten. Now that, that, that's never happened before, just to kind of, but four or five or eight, you know, there are a certain number that do come to us um, but then there are others who audition and go and want to go to other drama schools or end up at other drama schools um, so so quite a lot of people who do I, mean, I don't know if this is the case for you sometimes people are here and they kind of fall in love with the place so that's that's kind of more the reason why they're ending up here do, do you know what I mean rather than they that's the kind of natural progression it's more because of your experience yeah um, i was just going to say the from our year uh the people that auditioned that were sort of went to the oxford foundation or were on the far oxford foundation i think a lot of them were sort of it's oxford or i don't really want to go anywhere i know nye who is in our year at the moment when i'm you know i'm auditioning for two places one of them i don't really care about it because it's it like he he as well as a lot of other people where it's Oxford or I don't really want to go anywhere else because you said it yourself Julia you fall in love with it after you go on the foundation course um yeah so that's just that's me not saying because I work here <laughs> it's because I 
my experience of people coming back and why, why they, they've come back. Um, but that doesn't mean that that is the case for everybody. Other people do get involved in, in other drama schools or, or universities or other work. Great. Um, are you given work to do outside of class times? Pardon? Yeah, you have your lessons, of course, your lessons, no, your, your time to play, that's what I'm going to say, <laughs> um, at, during the course. And then outside of work, let's so say you'll be given a scene for acting or for singing a song that you have to prepare. Um, so you've got work or like say partner work, devising work, which you'll have to do outside of school during hours um sometimes collaborating with other students which then you bring in show to class and get like assessed marked on feedback on and also the practices you are doing in class there's a huge emphasis i would say on taking that outside of school and actually doing it at home in your weekends let's say refreshing going over something a warm-up that you've done just to keep it really in the body and because it's such a short course a lot of the work there's so much you want to do and learn that I'd say there is quite a bit that you do end up doing outside to complement your studies um, and of course you are set like homework but it's not it's, it's always fun it's, it's always building up on what you've done in class or preparing to do something in your next lesson, which then you show everyone and you you share work. Great. Um, does the audition process differ for the foundation course to the three-year or one-year course? So the only way in which it differs is it there isn't the second recall element. So your your first round is similar, um, and then your first recall. So you have two stages. Uh, and then at that point, um, decisions are made um, about whether you're on waiting lists whether, uh, or accepted or not accepted. Whereas if you were going for the other courses, um, you were then brought back for an additional round. Great. And I suppose you've sort of already answered this, Juliet, but one of these questions is, is this course aimed at people who are planning to do a three year acting course after? And another question earlier was, is everyone on the foundation course really dedicated to becoming an actor afterwards, which I think not always. Um, yeah, I would, I would say not always. And I would really love it if the course didn't become purely that. Um, and it thankfully it has remained that way. So, you know, I would love people to come who are wanting to just, you know, grow in their imagination in, in their connection to their body and these different skills. Um, they may well be sussing, you know, sussing things out, considering being a writer, um, or they go on and, you know, to a medical career. You know, you could go in any direction, really. Um, how about for you, for you guys and the mix of people on your on your course, or and obviously you have quite a lot who are going for. for yeah, a lot of other people ended up sort of they went on the foundation course thinking they were going to be actors and then I think a couple of them then went on to do went to university to do different courses mm -hmm. and then a lot of them went on to do music yeah I think as you said you know the the course isn't just for acting solely there's that one lane it yeah as you say it opens up your imagination to sort of grow over the six months and sort of work out what you want to do Okay. Yeah, so it, it in a way it, it puts you in a better position as a young person to kind of view yourself in that context and then make your next steps is what it is. It's partly what it does, I think. And there was some people in my course who had already a place at university for an academic degree. They were taking a gap year and in their gap year they wanted to do something else and for them that was acting. So it, it really it differs in variation. Right. Uh, what kind of scripted work is done during the course? So you will have some kind of harder language, classical language or, or, or Shakespeare, um, and learning some things around that. You would have some contem you know, contemporary. Um, it really, 
some of it does depend on the tutors. So we have some kind of tutors who are linked with the main courses who are involved. And then we like to have some other tutors and usually a couple of new tutors in different years, kind of actor, directors, different people involved. So um, you may have, you know, you may be looking at Chekhov because you have someone, a Chekhov expert who's involved. Um, you may have someone looking at a certain contemporary writer um, because they've been using that within their theatre company. Yeah, so, so some of it is not fixed. It, what I enjoy about overseeing the course is working with the tutors, finding what they're excited about and playing around. So there is a, the idea is that there is a, a mixture, a whole array of, of different script work. Um, have you got any examples um, of a bit of variety of script that you explored, you two? Yeah, well, we did, you know, we did a load of stuff from Shakespeare with you, Juliet. And, yeah. and then we did The Three Sisters and The Cherry Orchard from Chekhov all the way up to something like, um, you know, uh, George Orwell's 19... So I've forgotten the name of it. What is it? 19... Yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, with Dylan. So as you say, yeah, there's a huge array that spans, yeah, centuries, to be honest. <laughs> And as you say, yeah, it differs on the class and it differs on the tutor. Great. Um, do you do any screen work on the course? Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes. Um, so you get to, yeah, you get to uh, play around in different ways. I mean, you, you two have experienced uh, those classes more. Do you want to talk about some of the projects you did? Yeah, so we, at the start of the year, it was a lot of watching film and learning through watching how other actors perform and then learning about techniques used on camera. Obviously, it's something which is very different. A lot of us during school, for instance, never did film work. And then stemming on from learning about acting on camera, there's a project where we get to um, create our own film and go in partners where you take the dual role of directing and also acting in a film. So you direct someone else's film and they direct your film, which is a really good opportunity to work with different camera angles. Um, I found that I was on some days working on, at, for sound, um, like lighting on some days, maybe even holding the camera, it, it varies. And it's quite interesting because you get to know how it almost feels like obviously it's not a film set but there's a definite different atmosphere to being on a film set and it gives you kind of a taste of that um and then at the end we had like a mini oscars which was quite fun um but there's definitely like quite a lot of screen acting which is great because i know not all drama school foundations do screen acting so i found that was quite interesting great so there's a couple of questions about um audition technique within the course so one of them is will we be working one-to-one -one during the course with a teacher on audition monologues and then the other one is do you hold mock auditions and how do you prepare students for further drama school auditions okay yes yeah, so that's actually an area that's one of my areas so because i'm on the panel for the main courses and the foundation course so um so therefore i do run an auditioning course on the foundation course um, However, I do want to point out that I'm very keen on not taking a monologue, training you up in it, and then you using that to get into drama school, okay? Because the idea of this course is for you to gain things for, your, for yourself and to understand how to apply things yourself. So um, ideally, I try and give people monologues they don't like or that's slightly against their character or, you know so I get to them they go oh no and I'm like yes that's what I want because I want to be able to use it as a vehicle to stretch them for them to learn about um, you know what we're looking for how to use themselves in it how to um, you know really work out what the character wants how to really affect the other person all these kind of really yeah, key things so I would train you up on that yes work with you um, and also run mock auditions tell you exactly what I wrote on one piece of paper all that kind of thing so you get a sense of of that um, and I probably did it with you too I, I would have thought um, but but also I think just the course in general 
instead of just right, these are my tips, this is what I need to do, just the course kind of gradually, I would have thought, prepares you. How about for you two? Because obviously you were on the course, then you auditioned and then you got into a drama school. Um, so some people are interested in how the course helped you in that way. Jake? Yeah, I think you, when you touched on it, when you say the the auditioning classes aren't there to sort of like like give you a monologue that you can sort of work up and it's a yeah it's about taking everything that we learned from the foundation course and then applying it to ourselves and sort of going okay we've done the foundation course we've learned so much here that we can now take into sort of working so, well we had to work alone obviously because of everything that happened but yeah sort of working and taking everything and then going into the audition process and working out, okay, this works for me, this works for me, I've picked this up from the course, I can now add that, I can use that. And yeah, far have you got anything to add? About auditioning, I, yeah, yeah, it was definitely helpful in having the mock audition and getting feedback on that and also just seeing in myself what I tend to do. Um, and I think I found most of my techniques and skills I picked up from doing classes, for instance, voice, movement, the warm ups we were doing in those classes, the way I was <coughs> my body, um, that in turn greatly helped when I went to any drama school audition, like because I would do a vocal and body warm up prior to the audition. I would know how to get into the right headspace to work. And I think doing a lot of performances just in class in a drama school atmosphere. When you go into an audition, it did, it was a lot less daunting because I'd been in drama school already almost and had that experience. And just another, this is just a like tip for me that really helps is when you do have drama school auditions, I find I always learn something new at the end of every audition. So whether it's a recall or not, there's always something to be learned. So if you are auditioning, like during your auditions, you, you will learn 100% too. Uh, are there many chances to um, for, for performances at the end of the course or an end of course performance? So I would say it's not, we're not very focused on that, but there is. So it's the process and the, the classes and then within your class, something that you've been working on, uh, you would then have in, in class showings, uh, that kind of thing is more the emphasis. However, we do have these whopping, we, could use, we call them week 11s, um, these kind of moments of bringing something together. Um, so that may change from year to year. Typically in the first term, it's a kind of something from this class, this class, this class. And I would oversee this bizarre co combination uh, and create um, a, a showing that, that everybody shows to the rest of the school. Um, and then in the second one, it would be more linked towards um, play and scenes. And then those scenes are kind of combined together and shown. Um, so do you want to say your, ex your week 11 experiences at all? Jay, what are you going oh, that, Yeah, that was stressful, the week 11. <laughs> okay. Is it like the thing is with it is, yeah, with the idea of, you know, do you get to perform, you do get to perform with the people that you're that you're having such an amazing time with every day and you get to go into week 11 and show to the whole school sort of you know what you've learned you get your sort of little well we got our sort of like five minutes you know doing like a little scene that we've done and then you join back in your class and you yeah you do get that sort of little moment to perform and just show off what you've done but I think as you say it's nice to sort of have a finalized piece of the stuff that you've done that you can show yeah yeah adding to that and for us we didn't get to do our second term unfortunately because of lockdown but i definitely found after doing the first term's worth of performance like it's the end of that term and there's going to be a holiday afterwards and it's so nice because the whole school fast watched it and it just it felt like like a unifying fact and that is something about oxford that because it is a smaller drama school, it does have a very family type of communal atmosphere. So when we had done this like end of term performance in front of everyone, G 
during like Christmas time like it, it's such a good feeling like I can't really put to words <laughs> you have to be there Right, there's quite a few questions coming in about accommodation and I'll just quickly say that uh, for attendees if you go into the answered section of the Q&A Catherine's already answered quite a lot of these but I wonder I think particularly Farah if you don't mind speaking about your accommodation experience when you're on the foundation course because Jake I think you lived at home didn't you so yeah. not quite yeah mine wasn't that interesting <laughs> so we can pass the baton on this one it, so I lived um in a host family so there's on the day when you go for the welcome day um and you have a chance to ask questions you also get a chance to visit let's say host families for potential viewings there's a list of host families that the school gives and if it's cake like if you're cooking your own food it's a hundred pounds a week for most of them and if it's that they're also meals bills like everything rent all paid um it was quite definitely affordable at like 140 sometimes less a week um i lived in bladen which is because i was like right near the end found my home but there's the three main student centres, I would say there's this Woodstock, which is really near the school, like a 30 minute walk. Um, then there's Kidlington, which I'm currently living in. Uh, it's more like suburb and there's a range of different shops and it's central between the school and also city centre. And then there's obviously city centre Oxford if you prefer living in the city. There's no host families, or as far as I know, in the city, but then that's one accommodation option and what's good about that is they cook all your meals and like you get to go home to a warm home where you don't need to worry about bills or council tax or anything during term time and then there's also the option that if you want to live like in a flat share or house share with other students in your course like we had several people in our year group who lived in houses which they rented for six months um as a group and that's a really good option too if you want a little more independence uh living outside of home um if you want to i guess have house parties throughout the year when everything gets better and have people over that's also a good option i found that being in oxford being in a host family it allowed me for six months to move out of home and really really commit myself to this course and that's one of the good things about being so far away as compared to London where you are surrounded by a really busy city um you can immerse yourself fully in the course I found it was really nice living with a host family like as much as it's as family for me it was very like I had my own independence in the house I had my own bedroom um we would like our the person I was living with would cook our food. I lived with another student in the course, so there was kind of that social bubble with her. Um, so it, you do have a lot of independence too. It's more like you're just living in their home and if you need any help, they are there, but you're not under their rules, for instance, like maybe a traditional family. Right, thank you. Uh, do you get the chance to watch the people on the three-year and the one-year course um, perform? Uh, yes, you do. And I think that's, uh, I really think that's great. Uh, so you will see, um, I mean, this year with COVID, you, our current foundations will see slightly less performances, but they're still seeing some. Um, but usually you would see every group, every group's show. Um, you also get to see them doing um, monologues and duologues when they're doing them to um, casting directors, uh, you know, their presentations and assessments uh, where people are coming in from the industry. Um, sometimes you're in there as an audience, you know, getting to watch as well. So you do get a real sense of, of the other students' work. Um, you're nodding your head, Jake, yeah? Yeah, no, I was just about to say, I couldn't, yeah, because I, I forgot how much you see, because we got to see self songs as well and the second year's um songs that they used to do and as you say the monologues and then countless performances yeah it's that's probably that was probably one of my favorite things being on the course was just seeing really all their work yeah always good um a couple of questions about uh clubs or extracurricular activities far and jake i wonder if you can speak to that a bit did you do any I did, I did, like... <laughs> 
I mean, this so clubs as per se, the school has its own club, let's say at lunchtime or after school. There's not any of those. It's more that it, as a student body, if you want to create a club or a <coughs> group, you can. Like in our year group, we've made a writing group, a music group. So we have group chats and we keep in contact with each other. We write, we share that. And within all the other year groups, they definitely had that in the sense that they, let's say, did other creative pursuits outside of term to, or let's say the school hours. Um, so definitely like, you can do whatever you want in terms of clubs and find like-minded people around you who want to engage in similar hobbies and activities and learning. But in terms of clubs that a school organises, there's... There isn't, no. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're teaching you for a very long, the days are very long. Um, and so we're kind of engaged in, in that. And so currently there isn't kind of extra um, clubs on the side that are offered by the school. I was about to say, sort of, if they're talking about external, sort of not affiliated with the school, mm -hmm. I just played a lot of sports at the weekend because that was the only sort of time I could find to sort of fit it in. If that was the answer, yeah. I'd always just go back to Newbury, where I'm from, and just play football and rugby on the weekends. And that was my time for clubs. Right. Um, do you become very close and comfortable with your course group due to it being a very small size? Yes. <laughs> very. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. I Yeah. I think for, for me, especially in my group, I don't know what it was like for you, Far. I'm pretty sure it was the same, but... I still talk very regularly to all the people that I, were with, I was with in my sort of group on that foundation course. And I think it like a couple of days ago, it was just, it, it was a year since we left. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you, you make very strong bonds with the people because you're, you're with them for so, like, for so long every day. And they're so, you know, like-minded and exactly like you, they have the passion of, the same as you so you yeah I think you make very strong relationships with people very quickly um, just to, to add obviously that can be a, a bit intense sometimes for some people um, so there is a great there is a great sense of people uh, being together and being being family um, but uh, usually we would try and put people who are living in the same house in different groups um, just so that the, they're not kind of living with and then also being in uh, a class with the same, with the same people, just because it is quite an, um, you know, it's quite intense being with each other all the time. But it's great to see how everyone is very gracious. It's quite a mix of people and how I love to see people's edges getting knocked off a little bit, you know, for a few weeks and then and how people... The, they start to kind of fall in love with each other, you know what I mean? And start to really appreciate those differences um, in this kind of setting. Right, uh, what is the workload like and uh, could you have time for a job alongside the course? I mean... Yeah, go for it, like, Jake. Yeah, I found that, um, as we, like I think me and like, everyone's touched on it, there's, you know, you do work after school, there's, you know work that you have to work on and you you know dedicate yourself so much to the course I did find that the only sort of time that I felt like I could have a job was when I either worked on the weekends or sort of during the sort of the Christmas holiday only because I saw you know certain people that would come in after working like a night shift on the foundation course and they just looked shattered <laughs> but uh yeah so I, I think if you were to, there is time for a job. I think you've just got to sort of put the course first and then work a job around that. Yeah, I would also just say like my biggest advice is you can have a job during the course, but because it's only six months, you want to really during those months that you're at school, dedicate your time. And there's always the Christmas break. And also when you finish, because it finishes obviously six months so you do the other six months of the year if you do get into a BA and you need to like support yourself then to work just I found it was there was a lot of work so I was like I really want to dedicate myself to the course yeah so often I'm talking with students who are working and doing the course 
and trying to help them manage that. Um, so one of my roles is kind of uh, pastoral, pastorally looking out for people and noticing when someone's struggling. And so sometimes people start in that way and then they, they cut down the shift and they only do a Wednesday and uh, things like that, Wednesday and a Saturday, and they just do less work um, in order to be able to manage the course. Great. How did the course prepare you and or shape you for further acting training and your career in general? That sounds like it's a question for one. That's of another you. one for us, right? Yeah. How did it say, say it again so they can get the, it's quite a nice one, that. Yeah. It was something about it shaping you for the course, wasn't it? Yeah. For what you're doing oh, now. Sorry. That's okay. got to, I find that if you want me to read it out again. <laughs> Yeah, about preparing you for further training and for your um, career in general, but I can't find the question now. That's okay, don't worry. There's, I, so I was just going to say, I found that there's another question here about really good for your confidence in yourself and performing as a whole. And in response to those both, the two questions, definitely. Like, you learn so much about yourself. Um, and in confidence, I think it definitely increases. Because I know for me, when I was at school, it was you can act or you can't act. Like that's very much how the mindset was. And it was ranking all the students in terms of who's the most talented. And it just felt very different. Whereas when you're here at drama school at Oxford, it's a very equal atmosphere. It doesn't feel like there's someone who's at the top of the class. You know, everyone's got their strong points and their weak points. But it's very healthy. Like everyone does help each other and work to help each other grow. And it, for me, like my confidence definitely increased in my own acting ability. Also, you're working with people who are professional teachers and with uh, giving you compliments on your work, it naturally makes you think, oh, that's good. And like as a performer, I've learned so much. I haven't, so I did acting work before I started the course. And then during the course, it was like auditioning. And then I got into a BA, so I was like, I'm gonna do my three years of drama school training. And at the end, go back into the industry and do acting work. So I do want to make that investment. And I know if I went right now, only having done a foundation course in one term and came in a play or film, it would be so much different to if I actually finished my course and act. But I know people who did the foundation course and they're doing acting jobs right now. So I've got a friend and he's doing like a short film, um, plays collaborative work there's a lot that you can do a lot that you learn like we do devising and I think the most important thing is the atmosphere that you're in an atmosphere with 47 other people in your course 16 obviously in your class but in the whole foundation course and in a drama school so you've got the other year groups and we get the chance to talk to the other year groups and socialize with them and like get to know them so being around other creatives and creatively minded people, it really, I think that was the thing which most strongly stood out for me. Like it meant that in the future, I might want to collaborate with you. We might want to write something together. And it was that which like, I'm collaborating with people that I know right now. And so it definitely did prepare me and the contacts too that you get. Jake, do you want to add? <clears throat> um you sort of covered it all the <laughs> but you know i'll try and i'll try and give it yeah i think when it when the question was like you know how does it shape you i think there's always sort of constantly throughout the course we're given also sort of like little nuggets of like pearls as dylan one of the tutors would call them of that shape or give a new outlook on you know how to do things going forward you know there's such an idea at the school of you know, fail, like fail as much as you can. That is like, that's fantastic. And that's that's just like a little sort of thing that shapes you and changes what you can do next. And then there's so many of those little bits of like pearls that get dropped. I think they all sort of slowly change your outlook and so change your sort of shape to do the next thing. Great. Um, is the approach to different texts you learn far more classical or contemporary or a mix of both? And then as an add on, are there specific uh, plays or works that we study or is it tailored to each foundation group? Um, so it isn't the same all the time. So I would say it is tailored to the 
to the tutor and to the and to the group. Um, so currently, I have I've just come out of a conversation with a new tutor who's helping, um, and she is looking at the students that she's going to teach, and she's going to choose um, texts, um, particularly for her course, kind of more based on their cultural background and their interests. Um, so that those texts are going to be different to what was taught last year. Um, so does that answer? It's quite, it's quite flexible. There are, I would say that we would always cover Shakespeare because um, I love it, um, but also, and he's a genius, but also because it's a requirement for, for many people if they're moving on um, and they are often asked to do um, Shakespeare pieces in order to, to move on. Um, and then I guess the last three years we have done, done some exploring of Chekhov because we've had Charlotte involved, who's an expert in Russian translation and Chekhov plays. And yeah, so that's kind of why we were engaged in that. Um, but there are, you know, different so it's going to change all the time I was talking with someone else yesterday about contemporary play that two contemporary plays that he's considering taking scenes from to use with the foundation so I can't give you a list um but I'm at, you know once we've started this term I can give you a list of what we're going to be currently doing um but it it's always it's quite organic and, and does does change yes <laughs> great uh what is the ratio of group work to independent work Mm. Um, so, I mean, you might do a scene, you mean, when do you get to do, uh, let me think. Individually like shine. Say that again? Like individually shine, I think. Is individually the, 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 shine, no, I don't know. I mean, so there's an exercise that involves, you know, like if you were doing a histories of just an individual and you're doing a, a made up monologue. So those monologue moments, I guess, and those individual or in movement, in movement or an animal, everyone may be watching you as you develop your panther and then into a character and explore eating a banana or whatever is it you're doing at that moment. So there are, there'll be exercises and things set that are individual, but a lot of it then would then, I don't know what you would say, you two, but I think a lot of it then moves into kind of scene work and pairs and working together. Yeah. yeah, I think I was about to say my best example of it was when we were doing devising. I think for the first couple of weeks, we started doing just individual pieces of devising. And then we went into groups or sort of pairs. And then when you went to groups of four, and then as you say, you sort of work up from just sort of individual work, taking the ideas that you found there and then sort of bringing it together into a group over time. Yeah. yeah. So I think that I think it's more, yeah, I think it's more group work. But, but then obviously with the monologue course, it, you're on your own yeah. um, and learning from watching other people. So mm. it, it depends. It's a, it's a mixture. Yeah. And also just voice and movement, for instance, that is very independent. Like your own voice, your own body is going to be very different to someone else. So you're going to have to work on it differently. But then at the same time, in those voice movement classes, you'll be doing ensemble work. For instance, you'll have a poem and you'll all read that together or you'll interact with each other as an element. It'll be about interacting with other people. So that's working on yourself independently as an artist. What do I need to improve? And at the same time, how do I share and work with other people as you will be doing in the industry? Do you have any guests come in or is that more for the one and three year course? We had a guest. We have some guests. I think I missed one of them because I was auditioning, I remember, but there was um you've like guests come in for let's say a session a week for three weeks, for instance, and who teach us let's say an acting technique or we study a specific play with them, which I always find really refreshing to work with people outside of the school um and let's say or let's say an alumni who's come and it's always it's quite nice because like once they were in your position so it's quite nice to interact um yeah so it would it would be more in terms of like a, a one-off uh, like a workshop so there might be a, a workshop of somebody coming or in terms of a an actor who's quite established and between jobs and they can come and do you know four classes four days over a month you know so they would in a way feel part of the course rather than this is a guest turning up for an hour to chat with you 
um, that, that doesn't happen quite as much as it might do on the main courses. Um, how much time is spent on each unit or section of the course and how in depth do you look into them? That's quite a good question. Yes. Yeah, so you're right. You, there is a sense of um, widening your experience and giving you an experience of a lot of different things. So that is the style of the course um, that is deliberate. It doesn't mean that you can't gain a lot from that and go quite deeply into it. So the fact that, you know, you may do devising and then you may do animal studies in the next term, but you will have done, you know, three and a half hours times 10, like 30 hours, or whatever on that. So you, it's quite a long, quite a long time. Um, so there is a lot, there is lots of variety, but I, I think that that's great because it means you get to experience the improvisation, the devising, um, the acting through song, um, and it's a level where I think you do go, you do go deep enough. You, it, was there anything for you that you felt you, 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 you got excited? I mean, and do you like that for you too? That you, you get a bit of something, but not you, you know, you're not going just with that, and you've also got this because you could have spent longer on on something, and that's not give you devising. You know, that's another way of doing the course, but we've changed. Yeah. I think there was something lovely about sort of, you know, doing acting in the morning and then going to something completely different, like improvisation in the afternoon. So, you know, with the course, it was always sort of, oh, we're doing this. Oh, we're not doing that again. Next, oh, we're doing this completely different thing and a completely different sort of like animal studies next. You know, going from doing Chekhov in the morning and then having to become a koala in the afternoon, that sort of. You know, I, that's, yeah, I, I love that. I don't know what you thought, Farah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also, as it is six months, it's quite nice to immerse yourself in a lot of different areas. And there's certain areas, obviously, you can't go fully into, for instance, emotional memory in only six months. So you get the chance to explore different areas, but also that gives you the opportunity to know what do you actually like? let's say you've really enjoyed devising. Like I knew some people who at the end of the course decided, oh, I wanna be doing a course where I create my own theater a lot more. And let's say if they didn't get the chance to do that devising and it was more purely acting, they wouldn't have found that out about themselves. So you can find out a lot more about yourself too and what you like and then what you wanna focus on. Great. Um, to the students, what did you enjoy the most about the course? Oh, oh I, do you know what? I, I'm, right, the first thing that came to my head was improv. I loved improv so much. <laughs> Amy, because I think the guy, you know, the tutor that we have for that, Neil, was such a great teacher because uh, he'd spent so much time in it. And I just love the freedom of doing the improv. I think there's a lot of freedom with all the, the classes, but for me, I just love the idea of going up on the stage in improv and not having a safety net and sort of just trying to come up with something with someone on the stage that you have no idea what's going to it going to become and I, I love that that was my favorite and now i pass the torch to far uh, you mentioned animal studies earlier i did mention i think improv i would have really enjoyed but then i didn't get to do as much as our, we were in the second half and then it got cut short and then the teacher wasn't able to come. But animal studies, I definitely really enjoyed as it was something that I'd never done before. Like you don't do animal studies in youth theatre or really anything else. Um, and I like mentioned this, but it's a chance to really immerse yourself in the physicality of something and just like you, you're never going to be able to in university or outside of drama school just pretend to be an animal for a solid hour in class or pretend to be I don't know in movement fire and roam around the class and it was moments like that when you could just be these abstract physical embodiments that I enjoyed the most because there was just so much release um, and it was interesting to see like the characters they created at the end and where it can take you. And I don't know, like, it's very, like you can 
be quite different from yourself like I'm not that much of a I don't know how to put it, like watery person if you look at people as elements but becoming water in class then you can explore that aspect <laughs> it's quite funny because you two are mentioning possibly two areas that for some other people they're their worst ever areas they're <laughs> like you'll never get me being water you'll never you know um and they much prefer you know some of the kind of dynamic acting classes and various things um but but i guess sometimes we yeah. Was there anything that? Sorry, no. I'm asking my own question. <laughs> anything that surprised you, where you were like, "Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hate this," and then something shifted in you, and you, you just discovered it. Because some people here will be going, "I'm gonna hate that," and but actually, they might change in some way. Um, I think, so. to be fair, I think at the start, I, I truly didn't feel like I, you know, I was worried that, or I was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna like this." Of of, of being with the same group every day for, for the, you know, for the whole sort of course. But as I said earlier, you know, it's, I don't think you need to worry because they're, 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 you know, the people that you're surrounded with are the, the, the people that share the exact same passion and charisma for what you're doing. And so when I said, you know, when I kept thinking, I'm, I'm really not going to like this, you know, I think, yeah, I think it turns pretty quickly when you realize that everyone is there for the, the same love that you are yeah okay that's good i i was i thought it was going to be movement and animal studies because i was awful at sports at school but then in the <laughs> end they ended up being my favorite classes oh okay so great okay <laughs> always you never know yeah. great um what's the dress code Farah's wearing it at the moment. I think Farah is representing it, but she has a hood on, which is I, not no use when you're doing movement, is it? Oh yeah, it's um, so for the girls, it's for it's mostly just loose black clothes that are plain without any logos, and I think that helped. And no makeup, hair back, and it's quite good because it you're a blank canvas and you don't really bring yourself or any quirks or like things that you could fiddle around with into class. And then for movement, we tended to wear tight black. So leggings and a leotard or unitard. Most people wore leggings in leotards and also grippy socks are quite handy. Like the yoga socks with grips at the bottom to prevent slipping. Great. Um, do you get a qualification at the end of the foundation year? Uh, no, no, you don't. Um, but you don't need, you know, um, you can get a letter saying that you've done the course and, and it's well thought of. Um, but I think the things you gain are, are better than a qualification. Yeah. Uh, what is the average age of people on the course? Hmm. Uh, well, you're going, everyone's over 18. You get a kind of a section of school leavers, it's kind of, you know, 18, 19. Um, but then we usually go up, we've got a few people in their 20s. Sometimes we've had a couple of students in their 30s. It just, it kind of depends, but you, each group, you will, there'll be a mixture of ages. Um, are, are you young, were you youngies, you two? Yeah, I, I was 19 okay. when, I, when I got on the foundation. I was 20, I think. Well, I might have been, when I turned 20, I was 19 at the start of it. it is, for me, the mean age was probably 20, 21, that majority of people were on my group, but then it varies. You have people who've been to university too, who are so much older. Mm. Great. Um, is there any crossover with other drama schools coming to see student productions or is it very separate? Oh, it's, it's very separate, yeah. In terms of the productions here, the only people, you know, all the in-house ones, it's only if you're a student here or a tutor here that you, you get to see each other's work because it's all, everyone's in their process and they're learning and it's a nice, safe environment. Um, so there wouldn't be other people coming in to see. Uh, what happens in the showcase to other students at the end of the year? Um, are we back to week 11? 
I think this is our week 11. Is this the week 11? <laughs> week 11. I so love a week 11. One, it would be scenes, uh, maybe with, we may have chosen some kind of theme or, or poem or it was something that somehow links them together and there will be scenes from um, most likely from different plays. Um, often there's some animal, did you, you guys didn't get to that point, I think. Um, no, but we started, we started devising it. Yeah. The, it. Our group got a piece of music uh, as our sort of stimulus that would sort of stick everything around it. And then, yeah, we started to yeah. devise it, but we never got to do it. But... So then there's some devising around that. There might be kind of animal group pieces or, or movement within that. Um, something from the voice department and then your scenes as well. And that kind of comes together, um, you know, as a, as a, a kind of a themed piece um, that can be shown. Right, we've probably got time for just a couple more questions. I think there's a couple of quick ones here. Um, throughout the course, are you allowed time to leave if you are recalled for auditions elsewhere? So we are facing this currently. Um, usually, the foundation would run from September, October to Easter. And we would really recommend people to delay auditions uh, till the, near the end of that and afterwards. So often people are then recalled and all of that happens whilst you're not on the course. This year, however, the course has changed and so therefore people are having recalls within the course. So what's happening is, you know, people are um, going to be able to do, a lot of it is online currently because of COVID, so they may be in a separate room at the school doing their audition and then going back into class is what we are ideally trying to make happen. And then obviously if, if there's something linked with your further education um, and you are going for a week or somewhere and it lands on a school day, then we would have to let you go. Um, but ideally, when we don't have COVID, <laughs> all that shifts and that, that kind of process would be happening after the course. Great, and um, final question. Does the school have any local theatre connections? Um, yes, yeah, so we have a, a an old, uh, so, so Liz used to run a theatre up in York. Um, we have con connections with the, the Playhouse and the Pegasus and the Mill Arts and also um, just down the road. So those are, you know, sometimes, so our students are going to go and do some work in one of those and have their showcase filmed there. Um, so there are connections and connections being worked on those relationships being worked on. I would say that currently that doesn't, those connections don't particularly influence or come into play for the foundation course. Great, I think that's it. Um, if there are any questions that we didn't answer or you need some more information, if you just send us an email, we'll be very happy to answer those. And thanks everyone for coming. And thank you three for being on our panel. Thank you. Right. Thank you.